All right, everybody, welcome back to the KSO YouTube channel. We are on the dyno again with the Vice Grip Garage Seville. The last dyno session was on motor. Kind of wanted to just run the engine in a little bit, get some good break in time on it, some good hard pulls. And then the idea for this video is we're going to put the blower belt on it and make a few more pulls to see what kind of power it makes and what kind of boost it makes. But first, we're going to go through and run the valve lash on the engine. So the reason we want to run the valve lash is because we want to check it to make sure that nothing is moved since it was in the engine room before the engine had been run, you know, at RPM for, you know, the 15 to 30 minutes we've run the engine so far. If anything is out of whack there, obviously we've got a problem we need to look into further. And I'd rather find it now than find it in Indy where Derek might not get on the burnout pad. So to check the valve lash on the engine, we have to snatch the supercharger off. And I also took a little advice from a couple of comments that I saw. Since we have made different machine spacers here, I took and I labeled them. I'm not sure if you can see the stamp on there, but there's an A on there and an A on the supercharger bracket. Same with down here, B, B, C, C. And that's just to make it that much easier to put this thing back together if Derek takes it apart himself or one of his guys takes it apart. So kind of agreed with you guys in the comments that that was a really good idea. So we went ahead and did that, but it's time for us to jump into this thing and start doing the valve lash. Drew's wrapping up a job over on the other side of the shop and then he's coming over here to help me run the key and to bump the engine over to check the valve lash. So stay tuned. We'll uh, get this thing making some more noise with some big power in just a minute. So what is valve lash and why are we checking it? Well, for those of you that don't know, valve lash is actually a little bit of air gap that's between the tip of the valve and the roller on the end of the rocker. Basically, you wait for the valve to be completely closed and that's when you check to see what that lash is. Because obviously when the valve or the camshaft is pushing on the lifter, which is pushing on the push rod, which is pushing on the rocker arm to then open the valve, there's no lash, duh. But at rest, when the cam is on what's called the base circle, where there's no lift, you know, there's that rotation where the valve is shut, there should be lash in there. So when the exhaust valve first starts to open, you check the intake valve on a particular cylinder. And then when the intake valve first starts to close, you can check the exhaust. So, Drew's our willing participant in the car for bumping the engine over because I don't really have an easy way to do it from out here. Some race cars, you wire up a button on the firewall so that you can do it yourself and it's a one person last job, but Drew gets to sit in there and Good for chillax a little bit for, <laughs> chillax a little and we need your expert fingers. Yeah. Well, well. <laughs> All three women that watch these videos are going to get real excited. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so. So this feeler gauge is 12 thousandths thick, and that is the spec for when the engine is cold. When the engine heats up, it's actually going to change that spec, but Blueprint gave us a spec to check while it's cold. So let's see if we can uh, make this happen, and I'll do a couple of cylinders, and then we'll time lapse until this job's done, and we'll get back to making some power. All right, bump it. Uh, the intake just closed, so we should be able to check. Oh yeah, that's nice. So it's got just a little bit of drag and there's no up and down play, even though you can see the feeler gauge bending, but like where it's in between the rockers, you can see how it's kind of jerky. It's because there's just a little bit of drag there and that's what we're looking for. Basically, we want that same consistency on all cylinders and if not well we'll loosen this up and we'll adjust it all right bump 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 all right oh that's nice all right first cylinder is good go ahead bump bump stop that one's good all right next 
Bump. Bump. Okay, stop. That one might be just a fuzz loose right there. So let's see if I can set up this camera. We're going to loosen that just a fuzz. Just that little bump right there. Alright, there's our drag we're looking for. Tighten the lock back up. So there's a locking set screw down inside of it. But I don't really think I'm going to need it today because hopefully we're only making teeny tiny adjustments if we even need to make an adjustment at all. So, got a little bit of drag there, bump. Bump, bump, stop, bump, stop, bump. Bump, 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 stop. All right, well, just that quickly, we've got the driver's side of the engine checked. Didn't expect to find anything majorly out of whack, but at least we confirmed that. And because of the supercharger hanging over the valve cover on this engine, and really all big block Chevrolets with a side hung pro charger, it's a heck of a lot easier to do it here in the shade, on the dyno. Normally I'd have the fans blowing so I can't say I'm doing that right now, but as soon as I start this time lapse, we're gonna turn the fans on and uh, then I'll be chilling in some breeze, check the other side, bolt everything back together, and then it'll be time for another dyno. And I had a thought too, I'm gonna dyno this thing without that carb hat on it for the supercharger. I think we'll see some more horsepower. Because if you think about that air having to naturally turn itself inside of that small area, I think there might be a little bit more power there. So let's do a time lapse real quick and we'll get this thing wrapped up and get back to cranking it up again. All right, so we're gonna repeat the same process over on the passenger side of the engine. I do find a couple on this side that are, you know, maybe a thousandth or two thousandths out of spec from uh, where they were supposed to be. So just a little bit of a bump there. Uh, you see Will over here in the corner. He just got off of his full-time job and kind of coming to hang out and chit-chat about some things. And uh, he used to have a really big, big block Chevrolet with a Pro Charger on it and went really fast a few years ago, like to the tune of four teens in the eighth mile at over 180 miles an hour with a 615 cubic inch big block with a very large pro charger on it. So we were kind of joking around about, you know, this kind of brings back memories of us working on his car. And he started out with a project kind of similar to this. It was a 502 with an F2 pro charger on it. And then that morphed into a 615 cubic inch big block years down the road. Actually, it was a completely different engine. But you know, the project grew and the, the racing program grew and we had a lot of fun running that car. It was actually in a third gen Camaro and that was one bad ride. So we kind of relived some memories there about us working on his car together and also had a conversation about what our next steps are for Soccer Mom and where we're going to move forward with that project and try to work around the parts problems that we've been having. Basically, with Soccer Mom, we're wanting to upgrade to a half-inch head stud, but we can't get them. And that's just kind of the way things are right now in some of the, uh, you know, the race car parts world. But I'm bolting the supercharger back on to the Vice Grip Garage Chevelle, and then you'll see a little bit better here than earlier in the video. I'm going to take that black hat off the top of the throttle body and see what kind of power we make. All right, well, it's time for a dyno. Like I said, we're going to try it without the hat on it. 
and see if uh whoa helps if you don't kick the camera see if that uh, makes any difference as far as the power kind of curious i'm gonna pull a spark plug out and look at that and then we'll put the blower belt on and we'll try and make some big power so try setting the camera in a new spot for a new angle hopefully i don't drop it here too he just got off of work at his real job he likes data like i like that data that's cool holy crap so uh taking the 502 yeah wow so taking the little restrictor off goodness i sure didn't think it would take out that much that's impressive i mean the engine was like the intake was probably a little cooler so maybe the air temps were a tiny bit cooler but I warmed the coolant up to 165, just like I had done on the pulls yesterday. That's kind of impressive. Well, now we know. And now it's time to put the blower belt on it and force some air into the motor. What do you think? Oh yeah. We can do that, we'll be back in just a minute. Well, sometimes you just don't know what's gonna make a huge difference or not when you're messing with your race car. So, let that be a warning to any of you guys that have one of those hats for like a remote air filter on your carbureted or throttle body fuel injected setup. It's a horsepower killer, as we just found out on the dyno. So I had to go run a kid to the doctor, but while I was doing that, I talked to Vice Grip Garage and he still wanted to run the car on ethanol just to help it run a little bit cooler in the burnout pad. So we had actually gone and gotten some just in case that was an option. And while I was gone, Will swapped it over to ethanol fuel. And we're going to make another pull just on motor with the ethanol. And then we'll put the blower belt on and start making some pulls with boost. So let's fire it up, see how she reacts on uh, ethanol. And then we'll go on from there. So 48% ethanol. 
Let's see how she runs. So for this poll, we're reading about 66% ethanol. We were reading 11% when it was pump gas, because you know there's a little bit of ethanol mixed in with pump gas. That tune is really good. And I've got an advanced table in the Holly that adds fuel with flex fuel percentage. So we're gonna fire this up, see how close my numbers are and how close it stays to uh, the target air fuel we want. So let's see what happens. Bring the thunder. see what uh, kind of power it did. Download the log. Let's go see. All right, well, things look pretty happy there. See, max power went from 502 to 513, and that's, that's nothing but fuel change. That's no timing changes, nothing. So it's up power pretty much the whole curve. Down here, we're going from 504, let's call it, 503.9 to 517, so that's 14 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, it picked up 12 foot-pounds of torque peak to peak. 517 to 503. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's time to put the blower belt on. Alrighty, guess what's back installed? The blower belt and the hat. But the hat is now connected to the charge pipe. So we're gonna see if it uh, makes boost now. Had to go through and take the alternator belt off and then it's a little bit of a fight to get the blower belt on because this belt is perfectly the right length. It's a little snug getting it on there, but uh, me and Will did it. Yeah. So. Let's uh, fire this puppy up and see what she does with some boost. All right, Vice Grip Garage Chevelle. E85 plus boost. Not really sure what the boost is gonna be, but this first pull is gonna be a quick stab. See how the converter reacts. See how my corrections are right after it rolls over. Probably only gonna be a second to two seconds wide open. Let's see what happens. downloading but while that's happening we're gonna go look at the power all right 628 and still climbing curious to see how much boost that was so what did it pick up we picked up from 510 to 606 626, right? Yeah, 626 horsepower, 
510. So 100 and 116 at that power level. So time to look at some data. Do another one. All right, so Will and I look over the data and we see that the pulley combination and the blower, it is making right at nine pounds of boost on that first pull. So right off the bat, the numbers kind of don't seem like they're really adding up because by 14 pounds of boost, the engine should nearly double its horsepower. Like our standard air pressure that we live and breathe in is somewhere around 14, 14 and a half PSI. So when we add 14 PSI or 14 and a half PSI to an engine, it should effectively double what it makes on motor. So even conservatively at nine pounds of boost, this thing should pick up 180 to 200 horsepower over the 513 that it's already made. So we kind of go through, uh, made a, another run or two, and it was uh, made like 640, but still not the numbers we were really looking for. We kind of double checked all of the spark plug wires, felt like they were on all the way, but Derek had some Kevlar boots installed over the spark plug wires at the ends to try and protect them from the header heat. And we thought that they were on all the way, but we're about to find out that they possibly aren't. So we make another pull here after kind of wiggling all of them. And you'll see what leads us to believe that in the dyno plot after this pull. and then it picked up. So I'm starting to wonder if uh, we got something unhappy. All right, well, I think I might have figured out what's going on. I think this is on seven cylinders because when it first hit, that was 688 horsepower. And then you can see it dropped down and then ran the rest of the pull. So I'm wondering if we've got a spark plug wire that might be off, or at least it's grounding through the spark plug boot to the header or something under high load. So I gotta let it cool off a little bit, and then we will do a little bit of investigating. All right, so with some further investigation, we got a problem. You can see that joker right there is a little ooey gooey. And when I tried to pull off the Kevlar boot, this joker right here to try, which was, its job is to protect the spark plug boots. Didn't do such a good job. But when I pulled it off, it pulled the whole end of the wire off. And so the end that goes onto the spark plug down in there is still down in the wire. So we're gonna put some new spark plug wire ends on the back two cylinders. I think I'm gonna try a 90, see if I can get a 90 degree one to work and we'll use uh, MSD boots like the high temp boots. At least I think I have some MSD high temp boots in my random parts stuff that we have around here. So need a little bit of time to do that and then we'll make another pull because I think we're gonna make 700 plus. Cross my fingers. I think we're gonna do that. It's interesting that 
it was so smooth like that transition to boost it dropped the cylinder and it really didn't give much of an indication that it was down a cylinder the o2 sensor is on the driver's side and this problem is on the passenger side so the o2 sensor on the passenger or the driver's side looked great now if we had had two o2 sensors i would have seen there was some kind of a problem so the spark plug showed that the third one back cylinder six didn't really have a lot of heat in it because i don't think it was running let's fix that and make another pull all right so we put two msd 90 degree boots the high temp boots on the back two cylinders the uh the very back one wasn't hurt but i still wanted to do the high temp deal and then we changed from the 45 degree bend on number six to a 90 and i'll tell you guys when you're using these kevlar boots make sure that they're not making things worse so i think kind of what was happening is with it bunched up on the spark plug in like when you push the spark plug wire onto the spark plug and it kind of binds up against the cylinder head it was almost pushing it down into the header tube now the boot was around it between the uh or the kevlar boot was around the spark plug boot in between the header tube and the boot but it was basically kind of wedging it in against it and what i did is i i slid the kevlar boot up the plug wire snapped the the end onto the spark plug and then slid the boot just kind of back down where it kind of naturally wanted to go so the critical point of where it's going to burn is not you know right up where the spark plug is in the cylinder head it's up an inch or two and the kevlar boot i think was even preventing the spark plug wire from snapping on really good so we fixed that i took the uh the burned one off uh the kevlar boot that was burned up pretty bad so you can see that was that one's kind of torched there and it's uh really crusty on the inside and i took the one off of number two and put it back there after stretching those out you can kind of see they're up a little higher on the back there and it's now away from the header tube itself like i can actually get my finger in here and uh it's not contacting so let's see how she acts on all eight cylinders Oh, 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 oh. oh 779 oh baby that works okay it helps when they run on all eight cylinders no well no i mean you can see it didn't drop the cylinders like it did that last time right no that's what's the 779 Max power 779. Okay, yeah, so horsepower's over here. 
it's not for scaling, so the scales are equal. Let me, let me see if I can still do that. Uh, all right, well, woohoo! That freaking works. <laughs> now I'm gonna pull some plugs out of it, but that's gonna pretty much wrap up this uh, dyno session. All right, everybody, well, it's next day. You can hear the car running in the background, I'm trying to put a little bit of heat into it because, uh, you know, we gotta test it and make sure it works. It's a safety burnout, just like our new shirts. You can get it at uh, winwithksr.com. So, we put the uh, burnout tires back on it too. Let's uh, see how our new exhaust works to uh, clear the smoke out from behind the car. Here we go. well I think that was successful we did not pitch the blower belt off of it and uh, it got to the rev limiter really quick in third gear which with the shorter tires on it is probably like 160 miles an hour wheel speed but uh, yeah at least some pretty cool smoke and stripes on the ground we got the blue and got the red that's <laughs> kind of wild it's pretty effortless to do a burnout with this thing now which it kind of was before, but this thing's been a little picky. But we'll see you guys at Cletus and Cars Indy. See what the old vice grip can do with the car this time, and see you guys later. <laughs>